Adventures by Morse. Cotton E. Morse presents... The Cobra King Strikes Back, featuring Captain Friday. If you like high adventure, come with me. If you like the stealth of intrigue, come with me. If you like blood and thunder, come with me. Deep in the jungles of Cambodia and high on the top of a hollow mountain, there stands the ruins of an ancient Khmer temple. Within this decaying symbol of the past have lived for generation upon generation the ancient holy priests of the race that once worshipped the precious seven-headed emerald cobra. The race of Khmer's is now vanished, but still the priests, hidden away from the world, have carried on. But let Captain Friday tell it. Yes. Well, the temple of priests and the priesthood were unknown to the world outside until Taquan, a young Khmer priest, a graduate of the University of California, led his good friend Dr. Carter and his party to the stronghold. Taquan wasn't anxious to have my secretary, Patricia, Skip Turner, and myself on the trip. But Dr. Carter insisted, and so we were included. As soon as we arrived here, we began to notice strange, unnatural actions. You noticed it, Professor Lebrun. We, oui. every voice in the night, every shadow upon the wall, every temple passageway was fraught with vague, sinister promises. Mm, that's right. And then on the second night came the chilling wolf howl. A howl which emanated from human throats. The air was filled with the raw, pungent odor of the wolf pack. Slinking human figures, teeth agleam, eyes red with madness, scrambled from the temple passages and fled, frothing and howling to join the leader of the pack. Dr. Carter and his friends locked themselves in one of the great halls. Suddenly, there was a knock and student priest Taquan cried out to be allowed to join them. The door was opened, and there lay the young priest torn and bleeding, the victim of human claws and teeth. He was brought into the room, the doors relocked, and then he was bound up as well as possible. And then he whispered out his story of how he had killed Fen Lo, his brother priest. Taquan, you murdered Fen Lo? Why do you give evil interpretation to every action, Captain Friday? Murder is an evil word. Murder is also an evil deed, Taquan. Then I did not murder Fenlo. I killed him. But the thing I did was good. Mm, so you say. But it just happens that the individual is never the final word in such matters. Please, I have had enough of your occidental moralizing. Well, anyway, Chief, that's one worry off our shoulders. Taquan's taking care of one job for us. If he did kill Fenlo... Dr. Carter, make them understand... Their very lives depend on their faith in me now. You have something to tell them? I must tell them what has happened. They must understand what goes on here, or they will never leave alive. Captain Friday, do you mind if we take Taquan on faith for a bit? Uh, go ahead. We'll hear what he has to say. Do you hear that? We not only have heard, but we saw Taquan. It was best that you did, Dr. Carter. You would not have believed me otherwise. We understand this madness, Taquan, if that's your story. But tell us, is the whole of the priesthood involved in this disgusting practice? That is what I have to tell you. I was born here. As a little boy, I spent my time between the temple of the priests and the rice fields below the jungles. My mother was the daughter of the rice fields. My father was a priest. I see. You were trained in the traditions of the priesthood here in the temple and spent your leisure time with your mother. When my temple training was complete at the age of 13, I was sent to the padres of the French missions at Saigon. The old men of the temple in those days were far-seeing. They looked into the future. They were looking forward to the time when the Khmer Empire would again be a power in the world, I suppose. Yes. They wished me to know the language and the ways of the rest of the world. Fenlo was sent with me. We were brother priests. But what is all this to do with our present predicament? When I was a small boy, Dr. Carter, the priesthood was an honorable body. The priests were brave and strong and wise. Is that changed now? All is changed. It is not the same priesthood at all. The wise men have disappeared. 
this throng have been murdered. Degeneracy. A case of a very ancient tree decomposing. No, it is not that. The priesthood is very old. Ten, twelve, fifteen centuries old. Why should it decay in twenty years? No, doctor. It is not a natural decay. Do you know what is at the bottom of this disintegration, then? I do. There have been rumors of a mysterious clan in these jungles. A werewolf has always lived somewhere in the shadows. As a child, I have heard vague stories of terrible jungle orgies, human sacrifices on the altar of the emerald seven-headed cobra, unholy practices. The Black Mass. Here in the jungles of Cambodia. The Black Mass. And all the time that is supposed to have been an evil byproduct of a nerve overly sophisticated civilization. Hey, I thought you said these Khmers were civilized. Go on, Taquan. As I get it, this group that participated in this sort of thing had nothing to do with the priesthood as you knew it in your youth. That is most true. It was hated. The old men did everything in their power to stamp it out. And while you were away in Saigon and later in the United States, these human wolves in some manner got a foothold in the temple of priests. Is that right? That is so. I do not know. But they have turned this ancient temple from a place of honorable worship into a house of abominable practices. Are all the priests contaminated? All, Captain Friday, all. Those who refuse to run with the pack and join in the orgies have one by one been slain. You knew this, yet you brought us to this jungle temple? But I did not know, Captain Friday. I did not know until I came here and saw for myself. But what's to happen to all of us, Taquan? How are we to get out of here? That is what I am coming to, Miss Patricia. Fenlo had come ahead with Dr. Carter and had several days with the priest before I arrived with you. Yes, and I must say Fen Lo was a bad host. I saw nothing of him once we reached the temple. I was left entirely to my own devices. I know. It is sad to relate that Fen Lo was not able to resist the evil ones. When I arrived, he was already bound to them. Fen Lo became one of the werewolves? I cannot believe he did so without protest. But there was one alternative. Join them or die, as the other good priests have died. And so he preferred to wallow with the living in their depths of depravity. He would have gone out tonight for the first time to join the pack. You stopped him? I urged him not to go. It was useless. He was prepared to go. When the call of the leader of the pack came, he leaped to his feet. And you tried to prevent him? I intended to stop him, Captain Friday. But if it was the last thing I should ever do... Hey, you mean it was Fen Lo who ripped you up like this? It is so. And after you helped him get away from the ship. <laughs> what a swell guy. Ah, he was mad. With the madness of the jungle. Or he would not have touched me. But he was not yet tainted with the evil of the orgies. Well, I understand, Taquan. You killed him to save him from defiling himself. That is true. That is why I killed my friend. How do you feel? If I could have some water to drink. Here, Dr. Carter. All right, now. Let me lift your head up a bit. No, let me sit up by myself. I cannot have any weakness now. Can you do it alone? Good. Here, drink. Enough? What do you mean, Taquan? What do you mean you can't have any weakness now? My strength is all that will bring you out of this jungle alive, Mr. Perry. You have no friends anywhere here but me. If I die here, here you will die also. You mean we're trapped? Unless I am able to save you. You have a way? I have been lying here, recovering my strength. Now I am ready. It is time to act. Here, Taquan, you're in no shape to move around. When there is a need, one can do many things. But what is there to do? Make haste to travel the way we have come. You mean through the hollow mountain? There is no other way. Hey, you mean we gotta leave this room with all them nuts who think they're wolves swarming around? It is the only way. And now is the time. When tomorrow dawns and they have returned to their normal selves, they will find Fenlo's body and will know that I am against them. Then 
It will be too late. You think we have a good chance of getting to the entrance of the Hollow Mountains? It has been very still for some time now. All of the members are running with the pack. I think we have a good chance. What do you say, Chief? Just one thing. Taquan, you're leading us into danger. If I have the slightest feeling that you're purposely leading us into the hands of the pack, I'll shoot you where you stand. That is your privilege, Captain Friday. Good. I just wanted you to understand. Then are we going now? We should have food. There is not time. Once we are at the foot of the hollow mountain, there will be food. The horseman who brought us here will be waiting. But won't there be danger from them? No. They know nothing of the priesthood or its practices. They know me for a priest. I will do my bidding. Then the quicker we act, the better. What about Celia? She's dropped off to sleep here on the rug. Mm, sure exhaustion. Oh, wait a minute. Don't waken her. I'll carry her. We're going to need all hands if we run into a fight. Plenty of time to wake her up if we run into danger. You stood up marvelously well, Patricia. Oh, but would I give worlds for someone to carry me? Please, hurry. There's great danger. Silence is most necessary. Well, I'll go help Professor LeBron with the door. While they're getting ready, let me talk for a moment. Dr. Carter, you and I'll go first with Taquan. You can give him an arm if he feels weak. Next, Patricia, you follow with Perry and Celia. Yes, boss. You, Professor LeBrun, bring up the rear with Skip. Very well. All right, then. Open the door. Open the door slowly. Nothing outside, Captain. Good. Then let's move along. Down the corridor to the left, eh, Duck One? Yes. The whole place reeks with that wolfish smell. At the end of the corridor, we come out upon a great open court. Take the stairway downward at the left. Mm, I remember. Anyone see a lurking shadow, let me know. Don't shoot until we're attacked. No, that would be fatal. Silence is our only hope. Yeah. Here's the stairs. Now we begin the descent. All right, behind? Yes, we're close behind. Celia hasn't opened her eyes since Perry picked her up. Sleeping like a babe. Oh, I could die when I think about us having to climb down all those suspension ladders. I don't know how I'm going to do it. What a mess this expedition's turned out. Well, I, I suppose we should feel lucky to get out of here with our lives. Oh, be careful, Perry. Both of you would be killed if you fell down this long stairway with Celia in your arms. Mind keeping your hand on my arm to steady me? Yeah. There, that's fine. <laughs> Dr. Carter's a good sport, isn't he? Here he's come all the way from San Francisco, and now, just when he's on the point of finding something, he has to leave. Not a peep out of him. The expedition must have cost him a lot, too. Well, that doesn't hurt him half as much as the fact that he's getting along in years... This is probably his last opportunity of doing research work in Cambodia. Oh, that's a shame. Be careful at the bottom of these stairs. Hug the wall. Remember, this path leads along a bottomless chasm. Well, anyway, it's dark. I couldn't do this if I could see where I was walking. Probably won't light the torches until we start down the ladders. Wouldn't it be perfectly ghastly if we should meet some of those animal people on this narrow path? We'd we'll be in plenty of trouble. Uh, Professor LeBrun and Skip Turner right behind us? Well, I, I can't see anything in the dark. You behind us, Professor? Professor LeBrun. Skip. It's queer. They don't answer. You don't suppose those wolf men are slipping up on us from the rear? Skip. Professor, answer me. Oh, we've lost them. We've lost them. <laughs> Led by the Khmer student, Taquan, the Dr. Carter party is slipping swiftly and silently from the temple of priests, down the stairway under the monastery, and along the narrow precipice in the hollow mountain beneath. Presently, they must descend tier after tier of suspension ladders and bridges to get to the valley level below. Just now, they are groping in the darkness on the narrow pathway along the bottomless chasm. Patricia calls softly over her shoulder. Professor Lebrun, are you right behind us? What's the matter? Why don't they answer? Skip Turner. Professor Lebrun. Quiet, Patricia. You mustn't shout. Oh, oh, Professor. Why 
didn't you answer me? You skipped there? Why, sure. We waited back around the corner to see if we was being followed. Oh, you frightened us. Stay close behind. Right behind you, Patricia. We better go ahead. Sure, we're stepping on your heels. Hey, if you get tired, Perry, I'll take Cindy and you can come back here. Getting along nicely for the present. Hmm, gonna hang on to a good thing while you got it, huh? <laughs> I don't blame you. You folks are making too much noise back there. Hey, teacher. This here expedition's kind of a frost for you, ain't it? Frost? Hmm. Well, now, Skip, I wouldn't exactly put it that way. Yeah, I know, Professor LeBron, but just the same, you and Dr. Carter ain't seen nothing you've come to see. Skip, we've seen many, many things. We've witnessed one of the greatest tragedies in all history. Yeah? I've seen a prophecy defeated. I've seen what promised to be a great nation die unborn. I've seen men turned into devils. Hey, what you talking about, Professor? You have seen the same things, too, but you haven't recognized them as such. Yeah? I don't get it. <laughs> Does that mean you'd like an explanation? Why, sure. No, I think you and Dr. Carter have been stung on this trip. You recall the story of the seven-headed cobra of Tafram? You mean the emerald idol on a base of gold? Yes. And you recall the prophecy that declared the Khmer Kingdom would be re-established when it came again to life? Sure, I remember. I have seen that emerald Tafram cobra. It is recovered and is now in the vaults of the temple above us. Yeah? And does that mean there's going to be a grand rush of people into the jungle to rebuild this kingdom? Like what the prophets said? No. That is why Dr. Carter says we have lived to see a prophecy defeated. The priests of Camille have broken faith. They have become worse than devil worshippers. With the exception of Taquan, there is not a single worthy leader among them. Oh, well, then the whole thing's going to flop, huh? The great nation that was to be is this very moment dying unborn. And the men who were to lead the Khmers into this vast jungle to rebuild the old civilization are running in packs, howling like wolves, the slaves of their own passions. They've made devils out of themselves. And the new kingdom of Khmer is lost. Oh, golly, Captain Friday will be tickled pink to hear that. Hey, if you're sure about that, well, then his job appears done. Yes, he can return to Saigon and tell the French government that there will not be an uprising among the people of Cambodia during our lives, nor during the lives of our children. It will take generations to build a new Khmer priesthood out of the vile filth that now occupies the temple of the priests. Oh, that's great. And with Fenlo dead, well, we kill two birds with one stone. Oh, it is the end of a dream. Poor Taquan. What a tragic day for him. His friend dead at his own hands. His hopes of leading his people out of slavery and back into the promised land. Gone forever. Poor chap. Yeah, but still I don't see what Dr. Carter got out of this trip. That is, except seeing that cockeyed emerald cobra for a minute. Skip, out of this experience, Dr. Carter will be able to add a new chapter to the history of the East. Skip, hmm? where are you? Oh, uh, right here, Patricia. Oh, well, Captain Friday says we're almost to the place where we start down the ladders. Is everything all right? Yeah, tell him okay. Oh, what was that? They're on our trail. Dr. Carter, the werewolves are after us. Get on the ladders, quick. Can they follow us down the ladders? They not only can, but will. Hurry, Mills. Put down the girl. Here we are at the ladders. We'll have to light a torch to see what we're doing. A misstep now means death. Here, I have a torch lighted. Now then, talk one. You know the way. You first. I would rather stay behind where the attack is to be. Taquan, you said yourself that our lives depended upon your safety. It's your duty. I bow to your will. Good. Easy now. All right? I am on the ladder. All right, Patricia. You next. Oh, I... I'm afraid. Quickly, quickly. Juan will steady you. Oh, boss. Steady, Patricia. Grit your teeth. Oh, God. It's silly of me. Catch me if I fall to Juan. Oh, do not be afraid, Miss Patricia. Well, there. Are you all right? Well, don't, don't worry about me. Well, quick, then. Perry, is Celia awake? No. Still out like she was drugged. Well, never mind. You give it to me. Now, down on the ladder with you. Yeah. Now, take her in your arms. Down a little more. Okay. Black as night here on the ladder. You got her? Okay, Captain Friday. All right. Move down the ladder with Taquan. All right, Professor. You're next. Hadn't I better wait? Are you going to argue, too? Well, have it your own way. Here I come, Gary. Right here, Professor. Now you, Dr. Carter. You and Skip first. Do what I tell you, Doctor. I'm sorry, Captain, but I'm the head of this expedition. You will please descend. Hey, for crying out loud, get a move on. Listen at him coming up yonder. This is against my will. Now then, 
Follow the captain, Skip. That's okay by me. Hi there, Doctor. Harry, the entire pack is descending on us. I'm coming now. Steady my foot on the ladder, Skip. Yeah, careful. There you are. Now you're all set. Hey, I got a notion to take a pot shot up the path. Don't you dare, Skip. They can't know how far ahead we are. A shot would give us away. Oh, I suppose you're right. The best thing is to get down the ladder as fast as possible. We don't want to lose track of the others. Well, I'm doing my darndest. I ain't much shakes at going down a ladder backwards. It's too bad we can't get a gang of them on one of the ladders and cut it loose. Send about a dozen head first down the cliff. That is our final hope, Mr. Skip. You here, Talk One? I thought you'd be way down the ladder with Perry and the girls. I waited. My place is with the fighters. Hey, I'm, I'm getting kinks in my legs. I can't keep up this pace on a ladder. None of you can. On the other hand, those who pursue us are as agile as monkeys. It is no use trying to escape them. Our one hope is to select a suitable place and stand and fight. Will they have weapons? Here yeah, knives. Much more effective weapons in hand-to-hand fighting. And guns. Well, I'll take my chances with a gun. They'll be down on us so fast, you won't have an opportunity for more than one shot at least. Already, they are on the ladders. They're gaining on us. Hello, Chief. What's a good word? We've got to make a stand, Dr. Carter. The girls can't go much further. I was afraid so. Hey, hey, couldn't we tear loose one of the ladders above? That will stop them. As easily dislodge the mountain itself. These ladders are built on logs embedded in the granite walls of the mountain. Well, the ladder is only wide enough for two at a time. We can kill them as fast as they come. Oh, do not be optimistic, Captain. They do not climb down the ladder. They swarm. It's useless, Patricia. I can't carry Celia any further. Boss! Boss! Not so loud, Patricia. We're just behind you. Boss, we can't go on. Perry and I are finished. Well, that settles it. We'll fight here. The time has come, then. Perry, take off your belt. Here's mine. Strap Celia to the ladder. We'll need every man for the fight. Okay. Patricia, can you hold her against the ladder a moment? Yes, I think so. There. Put the strap around under her arms, and you can kind of hold her. That'll ease the strain. Oh, boss, I'm so tired. I could just let go and tumble down. Stop that kind of talk. I wonder how far it is. Oh, we can't be halfway down. It must be a couple of thousand feet. Well, if one was to fall, he'd roll clear to the bottom, I suppose. Yes. Remember, there's a bottomless chasm at the foot of the ladders. You'd go out of existence forever. Yeah. Oh, but they're getting close. Got your gun? Yes, of course. Now listen, Patricia. If the worst comes to the worst, save two cartridges. Oh, Perry. Now don't let yourselves be taken by those priests. Oh, it's horrible. Now promise. Yes, yes, I promise. Perry, when you get Celia tied, come up the ladder beside Skip. I'm right with you. All right. Is everyone in position? Now, Dr. Carter and myself in front. The next down, Taquan and Professor Lebrun. Third row, Skip and Perry. Oh. Oh, look here, Captain. What is this? The last great old call? Hey, looky, teacher. If you're planning to become an angel, you better start growing your wings in a hurry. You're going to need them if you leave the ladder suddenly. Hey, they're certainly taking their time in getting here. I thought they were right on top of us. It is the hollow echo that makes them seem so close. Well, bring them on and get it over with. Do not fret, my friend. They will be over only too soon. One last word. No one is to fire until I give the word. We can't take a chance of missing. When we know exactly where they are, Dr. Carter and I will fire. Two shots apiece. We'll drop down against the ladder and Taquan and the professor will fire. They'll hug the ladder and Perry and Skip will fire two shots and that'll leave us plenty of cartridges for hand-to-hand work. You Got understand? You, Chief. Okay. And Patricia? Yes, boss. I'm sorry I haven't time to come down to you. Don't lose your nerve. Oh, all right. Good luck, boss. Okay. Here they come. Are you ready, doctor? Ready, Captain. Wasn't so blessed and dark. Well, there they are. Let them have it. Down, Doctor, down. Have it, them duck one, old son. Out of the way, you guys. Give it to him, Harry. You bet. Get him, get him. I see you. What did you do? Well, there it is. Too bad. It was you or me. We've driven them off. They're running back up the ladder. Oh, I see, Captain. There's a fight going on up ahead. Who is it? I hear it. And I can't see. Is that you, Skip? No. No, here I am. You're still here, Perry? Right alongside. Where's Taquan? Taquan! Taquan! Doesn't answer. Where's Dr. Carter? Doctor! Doctor! Hey, maybe they're both in it. Captain! Captain, give me a hand! Quick! The doctor, grab him! Ah! 
too late. Hey, you mean Taquan and Dr. Carter was thrown off that ladder? Yes. They're both gone. I dived a thousand feet into that black hole. Dr. Howard Carter has led his final expedition into the mysteries of the past. He came into Cambodia in defiance of a fate that overwhelmed and destroyed 30 million citizens of the ancient Khmer Kingdom. But he was not strong enough. And like the 30 millions, he too passes into oblivion. And with him went the only honorable priest of the Cambodian jungle, Taquan. You have just heard the ninth episode of The Cobra King Strikes Back, the tenth and final episode entitled The Amazing End of an Expedition comes to you next week at the same time. You are listening to Adventures by Morse.